The veil of secrecy is being lifted from the world's best-known military facilities. The CIA has approved a three-volume book project all about Area 51, about 100 miles north of Las Vegas. Now, these days, it's an Air Force facility, but it began as a CIA outpost and was home to all manner of classified projects. The I-Team's George Knapp spoke with a longtime CIA electronics specialist who led the effort to declassify what were once deep, dark secrets. We were doing a presentation in the bubble at CIA when they declassified us using the name Area 51. The images on the walls of T.D. Barnes' home office were once so sensitive they could have landed him behind bars if he had made them public. But times have changed. During his years as president of an organization called Roadrunners International, Barnes led the effort to tell the real story about what is today the best-known secret base in history. His members, pilots and engineers who had worked on classified programs, shared bits and pieces, including photos. Barnes would then ask CIA for permission to post them on the group's website. Until a few years ago, CIA would never even acknowledge the name Area 51, though it was known worldwide. But the Roadrunners helped change all that. In fact, they were almost shoved at us. And, and they, just like this last, the, for the information for these books, they, just, they sent me. They said, we just declassified 25,000 pages of documents. They're, they're declassifying it so you can have it, right? Exactly. They want the story out. One reason for the change of heart is the CIA lost records of its own programs. All photos and files regarding Project Oxcart, for example, were lost by the Air Force. So CIA historian Dr. David Robarge hoped the Roadrunners could help reconstruct that history, which is what happened. The precursor to Oxcart, the U-2, was built during the darkest days of the Cold War, a time when we were actually in a hot war with Russia. American lives were being lost though the public never knew about it. The Air Force at that point, before they ever decided to go over the U-2, had already lost 10 flights with a total of 75 crewmen was killed in Russia trying to do what the U-2 eventually did. They were going in with planes that could not get above the missiles, and the minute they, 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 dart, they called it ferret flights. They would dart in to get what they could, and they would get shot down. Barnes solicited input from his members not only about the U-2, but also the programs that followed, including the so-called Blackbirds. He obtained so much material, including photos taken inside Area 51 of planes and programs and everyday life at Groom Lake, that his plan to compile one book became three volumes instead, the CIA Area 51 Chronicles. Among the many surprises, Barnes says the famed SR-71 one Blackbird, officially the fastest plane in history, never flew out of Groom Lake. Other planes in the Blackbird family were flown there, including the A-12, which flew higher and faster than any plane ever built by humans, Barnes says, though its accomplishments remain classified. We call the, the SR-71 the family model. It's the cheap model. The A-12 flew 5,000 foot higher and it flew faster. The CIA employees bonded on and off the base, in part because Nevada was infested with Russian spies who were trying to find out what was going on. Cover stories were told, and secrets were kept within the base itself, to the point that few knew their true employer. Less than 5% of the people who were in Area 51 had any inkling that they were working for the CIA. Today, Area 51 is listed as an Air Force facility, but is CIA still there? Barnes smiles and then answers he can't really I, say. I can't, George Knapp, 8 News Now. Uh, Very interesting. Documents Barnes got for the books show Area 51 was officially listed as a CIA station back in the 50s and 60s. And he adds at least one other location was listed in that same loop. But its name and location is still considered top secret and has never been made public. We have links on our website where you can learn more about the Roadrunners and the book project.